What's up guys, Rapid Graphics here. Thought it was about time I could speak to you guys on the mic, help you out through step-by-step -step tutorials, because I, th I don't think the uh, the music ones help too much, to, a bit too quick, and for people that are trying to learn off me, in a way, it's, it's not really helpful, so I thought speaking, I can engage with you more, I can, uh, I can tell you how things are done, talk you through my videos, and hopefully help you, and you guys can help me with, with feedback and help me improve as a YouTuber. So yeah, so cut me some slack, I could be shocking at this, but we'll see how it goes. The first thing I did really was uh, to get um, a PNG file of Harland, which was from 3D Renders on the internet. If you don't know 3D Renders, they provide high quality PNGs of players in all the different leagues, so they are absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'll leave that link in the description below, so if you want to use them, I highly recommend it. So with the Etihad image, I used it as an overlay over the background so that it would, wouldn't be too dominant but also uh, had quite a nice visible uh, feel to the piece so you could see it in the background but wasn't too uh, taking up too much um, of the eye. And the next thing I did was uh, add some typography which was um, Harland obviously. Then I uh, duplicated it into uh, five different layers behind Harland as you can see now. Next I um, found a nice smoke overlay that I had in my files. And then I uh, changed the blend mode to, um, I think it was a line of dodge, which gave a nice kind of turquoise kind of colour, and light blue. Um, I added some smoke on the top, but later on in the video you can see I took that away, as I didn't think, I thought it was a little bit too overpowering. And then um, what I did next was actually I um, grabbed another texture, which was a weird kind of wavy kind of texture. Not sure what it is, but I thought it looked really cool. Added the blend mode again to, um, I think it was hard light, soft light. Um, thought it looked quite cool with it, this kind of wavy texture that is sort of in the air, kind of floating. Once I sort of got the background in, I um, went straight to camera or filter on Harland. This is one of my favourite things in Photoshop to do, just to sort of uh, tweak. Uh, tweak the player, the, the main subject, on just lighting and uh, sharpness and just yeah shadows. I think this is, this is extremely important in um, making players stand out. I don't want to use the word it, it's pop expression because I think every graphic designer uses that word, but it makes them stand out, makes them sharper, gives a nice glow to the player, which I, I think is a must in uh, graphic design. So yeah, after that, and then I started to... Um, Add some kind of a light beam from the uh, from one of the sides of the pieces. I decided to go top left as a kind of main area where it come from. Here I'm just uh, using a, a paintbrush of just a nice light blue colour. Nothing nothing too difficult there. And then I changed the exposure of it. I clipped an exposure mask to it, and uh, obviously turned the brush to to white and then started painting over it. I didn't really need to do it this way, I could have just decided to go with a white, with a white um, paintbrush. I'm not sure why I did it this way, but in the moment that's just what I did. So um, that was the end, I wanted to have a, nice, a light source where I could uh, start adding some highlights to Harland, because otherwise there's not much point having highlights with, without a, an external light source to the piece. After the light source, I went on to adding uh, just a, a shape, just a square, square shape um, from the toolbox. Uh, this was just to uh, add like, a different kind of dimension to the piece. I just thought it looked quite nice uh, to have like a box around the text. And then I changed the square blend mode to uh, a divide uh, blend, which I just made it kind of fit into the background, wasn't too dominant, and just sort of sat behind the text nice and uh, subtly. Now, up next was um, I got an exposure layer and uh, took put the exposure down and clipped it to Harland. Then I inverted it and um, then used the white tool, the white um, paintbrush to uh, just uh, paint in the, the shadows of Harland. This is extremely important, I feel, in uh, on the players. Just adds a bit of a uh, brings a bit of realism to uh, the, to the piece. Obviously, where the shadows should be, and just makes it stand out even more, really. It's important to remember um, put the flow down to around about 10%, just so it's not too overpowering of the shadows. Just a subtle shadow really can make just can make all that difference. Having it to having the flow about 100%, you'll be just painting black onto black onto Harland. So um, 
having having the flow down, you can really just get the areas that you want to have a nice bit of shadow on, and then make it the way you want it to look like. To be honest. Now I added in another exposure layer, which was um, I added the exposure up to about plus two, and then I inverted it again using a white paint brush to uh, paint in the highlights on Harland. Uh, so obviously I'm aiming to do more of the highlights on his right shoulder, towards up towards his face, and on his arm, as that's where the light beam was coming from and in the top left of the piece. So to so to make sure to make sure it actually makes sense where the highlights are. Really with highlights it's just it's your interpretation where you think the lights will be hitting. Normally you can see on on the light the lighter shades of the uh, of the person. That's where the highlights will sort of be. As you can see, I'm just um, just sort of experimenting, seeing what looks best. And obviously, if it doesn't look good, I'll take it away. So the next thing I did, why I did, I found a, a nice kind of dotted, kind of like wavy kind of texture in my files, and I thought look, I thought it could uh, add quite a nice dimension to the piece. And I added um, a blend overlay of divide to it, and I reduced the opacity down to about 80%, 80, 90% looks like in the end. And I thought this this added quite a nice. Um, depth to the piece as obviously you've got the edge side in the background and it came up with the hardened text and then it comes up with this nice this texture ahead. I thought it had a had quite a nice um colour to the piece. Next I um got the burn tool which is a tool you sort of just uh it's just to darken areas that are already quite dark on so on Harland it's just to darken the shadows a bit more, add a bit more depth and make them stand out a bit more. So you just went I went down with it just to the shadows just to make them a little bit darker. And then I went to uh, the opposite tool, I can't remember what it's called now, but it um, basically the opposite, it just uh, lightens the areas that are, uh, I need a little bit more, I don't know, highlights, uh, which again, just sort of just makes it a little bit more crisp and stands out a bit more. Next thing I did, I added some, um, just a, a paint kind of splash to the piece, just in little areas around, just behind Harland, I thought it looked quite cool. Um, and then after that, I added some more typography, which, uh, which was Man City. I thought uh, I just made that the main bit of the typography, which is going to sit behind Harland. I decided to take out the, uh, that one of the Harland um, texts behind to allow the Man City bit to just fit in there nicely. As you can see here, I decided to uh, go with a kind of stroke kind of feel to it, but I didn't like it in the end. I went back to just the bold text. I tried playing around with a few colours but to be honest none of them really caught my eye, especially definitely not the green, but no I thought white was the one. And then I um, just uh, made a new layer and I clipped it, uh, If you, you can just clip it down there on the right button, what I normally do, I hold option and then just hover over between the two layers and then click there and you can easily clip it, which made my life a whole lot easier when I started Photoshop. But as you can see here I got the, the kind of the paint splash again, found a nice dark blue colour and just uh, added it to the uh, to the writing, which I thought was quite a cool effect, kind of representing the colours, just the blue colours. It's a bit dark for City, but it has the same kind of feel. 
and then, and then I added a nice uh, drop shadow to the text just to make it have a 3D kind of feel which in it, which again I just thought it looked quite nice that's, that's the main thing with graphic design if you think it looks nice and it is pleasing to the eye I think you go with it like it's not really it doesn't always have to have a meaning it just if it looks nice that's the beauty of it now coming towards the end of the piece I went onto the internet uh, I don't know why I say internet I went onto Google and um, found the Man City uh, emblem the badge and uh, just wanted to put that um, on the piece as it's a poster for Man City and for Haaland um, so I put that just central at the top which I thought looked good again and then I also um, went ahead and found the Puma the Man City sponsor and put that next to it as well And as you can see now, I've gone back on Camera Raw. I've um, converted the whole, uh, all of the, all of the layers into a smart object. And now I've gone to Camera Raw Filter, and I just in increased the texture. And my favourite part is this bit here. You go to colour grading and you just sort of um, play around with the colours and see what um, stands out to you. Um, obviously, I like to go nice and subtle, but also um, also have a nice kind of, not a dominant colour to the piece, but um, a vibrant colour as, as, as I've said before. Well, that's that. That's the end of the video, guys. Um, I was really happy how the, how the actual final edit turned out. I hope you I hope you enjoy the, uh, the final product. I just want, I, I love it. I love doing edits on it and new signings and just on just on players as well. You can really experiment and just try different techniques and stuff like that. Just it's always exciting, especially with a new signing, to do an edit on them. On that note, do you think Haaland's going to uh, kick it off with City? Let me know down below. I think I think he will. Watching Liverpool in the Queen's Shield against City, I'm a I'm a big Liverpool fan, as you might have, you might have um, found out by my YouTube channel that a lot of my edits are Liverpool. But I try to I try to be as neutral as I can on this channel, but it's quite difficult, especially when I do Liverpool edits. But um, let me know what you think Haaland's going to do this season. How many goals he's going to score? Will he hit it off with City? What he looked at, he looked good in the Liverpool game. I've got to tell you that he, he missed a few sitters, but. I think he'll really be a he'll be a threat in the Prem, 100. percent He'll be one of the top scorers. Him, Son, probably Salah. Them three, I think, are the main men. Probably Kane up there, but we'll have to see. Season's approaching. Only two two days away now. I'm buzzing. More edits coming out. First mic video out as well. I'm happy that's happy that's done. I wanted it. It's always difficult to start with your first mic video, but finally we got it done. So um. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe, like as well, it always helps but <laughs> new edit will be coming up soon and cheers, thanks for watching.